I can remember what I was doing when Neil Armstrong first put his foot on the moon. Others will remember what they were doing when the planes crashed into the Twin Towers. These are indelible memories that become markers in our life's journey. Ask any person who has made the most important decision of their life to commit to God by being baptised as Jesus has asked, and the chances are all of them will remember very clearly when, where and who baptised them. Why? Because baptism represents a turning point, a commitment, like marriage, and life will never be the same again. It's something special between you and God. God is love, therefore he wants a real, practical relationship with us. So join us as we explore what God has to say about the special significance of baptism and the blessings that come in life by belonging to Jesus. Danielle, do you see a relationship between baptism and marriage? Oh, absolutely I do. I think most people want to be loved and cared for and committed to. Um, I know most chicks do, and I'm not going to speak for every woman on the planet, but um, I know in my own experience in marriage that, you know, things come by and hit you, like, you know, losing children and financial stress and, you know, family arguments and all sorts of things. And if you're not committed to one another, those things can very easily come between you and destroy your relationship. And, you know, um, Jesus loves us and is committed to us. And, you know, when we go through life's trials, um, if we're com in a committed relationship to him, um, getting thro through those times is, is just beautiful. And so to take that step into baptism and that step um, towards commitment with God is really a very beautiful thing. You know what in intrigues me about marriage? It's a very personal decision two people have made, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to do something and create a very close bond with each other that they would not normally talk to people about. But they gather all their families together and they announce to the whole world that this has made such a difference in their lives that they're going to live with this person forever. I think baptism's a little bit like that as well. It, it's a very personal decision you make to commit yourself to Jesus. It, it's, it's a whole life thing, just like marriage. And uh, you want to tell everybody, you want everybody to know. So baptism, like marriage, is a public declaration of a uh, of decision you made very privately, I think. That's right. And something that, you know, people want to celebrate too, I think. Mm. We've talked about this matter of baptism, Johnny, as far as being public. Why is that so significant? Um, <clears throat> well, I think that um, it's not just about believing in God. Um, uh, it's not just about b believing about God. You have to believe in Him. Because um, James uh, in the Scriptures talks about um, faith without works is dead. And, and I'll just read it for you. It's in uh, James chapter 2 and verse 9. And it says, You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and they tremble. But, uh, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? So this tells me, this verse is telling me, that faith must be accompanied with action and obedience. You can't have faith um, without, any, um, without any works. So baptism is an outward demonstration? Well, it shows our commitment to him, shows that you love him, it's a response to him. Well, getting back to Danielle's uh, experience about marriage, I guess that's what marriage is about, isn't it? It's an outward commitment, as we have all know, of, of, of something that's gone on between two people. And I guess baptism, is, is in the spiritual sense between the person who's baptised and, uh, and God. I think an important thing about that is too, like even a marriage ceremony or a baptismal ceremony, if you call it that, the thing that happens before that though is the heart commitment. It's that true commitment inside. Mm -hmm. And without that, I mean, anyone can stand up in front of anybody and say anything, um, but what is the true heart of this decision? Johnny, how was Jesus baptised? Because, you know, there's been a lot of controversy over this matter of baptism. And I guess that really the important thing is, how was Jesus baptised? Well, let's go to it. Let's, um, I don't want to um, give my points and opinion, but um, Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 3. And um, 
Matthew chapter 3 and verse uh, 16 and 17, it says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice from heaven sa- came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So it tells us that Jesus obviously went down where there was a lot of water into a river in the Jordan River and came up out of the water. So Jesus' baptism was one by immersion. Rob, how do you see the significance of that? What we've just read there about Jesus going down into the water and coming up out of the water, what's the significance of all of that? I think Paul talks about that, doesn't he, in uh, Romans chapter 6. I uh, just read you a couple of verses there. Paul is talking about how we should live as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So baptism represents a, a change in our relationship to our previous sinful nature. We have died to sin, and when we were placed under the water in baptism, mm-hmm. it was like we were put in a grave. And Paul is very careful how he makes the next connection. We come up out of the water and we live our life in the knowledge that we are dead to sin. So that's the secret of Paul as a Christian. So baptism is an an important marker of the beginning of your Christian walk and also an indication of how we should continue to walk as a Christian. I understand that, um, you know, when you're baptised, it represents that you have a changed life. Yeah. That um, all things are new now. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, um, there was this old part of our life, how we used to behave. And at some point in our life, we met Christ and we fell in love with him. And now we want to continue to aspire to walk uh, in the uh, Christian lifestyle, but we still have bad habits at that point. <laughs> I agree. Do we, and... Johnny? Do we? <laughs> well, um, I don't know about you, but yeah, I do. unfortunately, yeah. it's true. Unfortunately, so, it's true. so what I'm yeah. saying is, um, we shouldn't give up, even though we might stumble and fall, right. like uh, like we did with the uh, this episode with the bull riding. You know, yeah, I remember. I mean, that. I got yeah. dusted a couple of times. Yes, and so um, you know, it wasn't getting dusted and then giving up. Um, you get dusted, you dust yourself up and um, get back on again and have another shot, you know. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It's very important. Baptism isn't a magic thing that changes us automatically. It's, it helps us live out a new life, but we have to live it out. So we are, we're going to make mistakes along the way. And I think it's nice to know that Jesus forgives us. Absolutely. And I know that we're clothed with his righteousness and perfection, you know, mm. um, each and every day when we ask for forgiveness. But I think there's a danger too when we um, think that uh, we can, we're all holy and we think that we can make that mm. perfection uh, on our own, on our own merits. There's that danger. And if we do, we seem to look down on everyone else. Mm-hmm. And, um, but, um, and if we don't make it, we throw our hands up in despair. So we need to be realistic about our limitations and our abilities and continue to rely on on Christ. I've met many uh, Christians over the years when we talk to people about the subject of baptism and I would think that many of them feel that baptism is like a graduation, you know, that when they've sort of got to a certain level of accomplishment and perfection, then we can be baptised. But that doesn't seem to be what the Bible's teaching at all. It doesn't seem to be a graduation. It seems to be but... It's a beginning. A beginning. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of dusting, to use your expression, Johnny, a lot of um, falls and, and get up and dust yourself off. But I'm perfect in Christ, you know. Yes. And uh, when I keep putting on his character and try to be uh, conformed and transformed in his character, it's going to be a day-by-day process. And I think the difference is, too, when you, when you love somebody and you are committed to them... It becomes a lot, I don't want to use the word easier, but it almost is. Like, for example, I'm married. Um, I love and respect my husband. I'm not going to go and have an affair because I know that wouldn't be a healthy thing for our relationship. It would um, damage our relationship and it would hurt him. So I don't 
I don't do that. You know, I don't go down that line. And it's the same with God. I think the things that we would have maybe done in the past, um, once we fall in love with Jesus and we're committed to him, we don't want to do that. And at times where we do, like you say, Johnny, you know, stumble and, you know, we dust ourselves off and get back up again. Um, there's a, a repentance and a confession, you know, that happens um, for us to then stand up and continue on in that commitment to God. Yeah, that's a good point. Robert, I just want to come back to the point that you raised from Romans because I think that text is very significant. Yeah. You know, that, 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 did you say that you read there that we are buried, the first thing that happens, and I guess that when you have a burial, you've died to something, haven't you? Yeah. You've died to your former life. Mm-hmm. And... Um, but Paul goes on to say you should consider yourself dead. Yes. So he says as a Christian, you live out the reality that has taken place when Jesus died for our sins. So we also have died to sin because yes. of Jesus. It, it's simpler than it sounds, actually. Um, it, it, it's like being in a relationship. Um, you were talking about a relationship in a family with, between spouses. I'm thinking of my relationship with my daughter. I want her to have the best life and to continue to act in the best way. Mm -hmm. But I love her and, and she knows that. So when she does something that disappoints herself and me, we still can work through that. And I think that's a little bit like us with God. There's a, there's a relationship that God wants to establish with us and we want to live within that relationship. As Christ was died and was buried and then he rose from the dead. What's the significance of us being raised from the dead? I think it's a newness of life. You know, I think it's, um, uh, there's some kind of, there's a transformation that goes on. And so once you, like Danielle was saying, when you love him, you want to please him. And so I think that's the significant thing about being resurrected with Christ. It's a new life that you rise into, new principles, new standards. Um, a higher plane than where yes. we came from, you know? Because there's something else that I find that people get mis misinformed about, and that is that when we're baptised and we have the power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that's available to us as Christians. And I guess this is why Paul could say in, in one of his uh, letters, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because I meet people who say, oh, I can't do all that, you know, what God expects me to do. But we can't do it in our own strength. But the good news is that we can do it through the power of Jesus. Mm. Yeah, I believe it. When you look at the experience of Jesus and also what the first followers of Jesus were doing, um, they were drawing on a and a rite that existed in Judaism. And so to be baptised, you got buried under the water. So this was something that took place. Uh, you, you were taken and placed completely under water. And uh, that's, that symbolised turning aside from uncleanness and turning towards cleanness. And I think, think that's what John the Baptist took over and why Jesus and the early church use this as the gateway into Christianity, gateway into the church. When we're baptised then, we are not only linking our life with Jesus, but it is a cleansing. Yes. To use your, you know, yes. to get that expression. Yep. We're, we're clean, so to speak. We are clean. Not in ourselves, but we're, we're clean in, in Jesus. Yeah. I was brought up to believe, not the biblical method of baptism, the way Jesus was baptised, I was brought up to be christened. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't remember anything about it, but I have a, my parents bequeathed to me, you know how being the firstborn in the family, often you, you, as parents you tend to be pretty uh, camera clicky. Mm -hmm. And uh, they bequeathed us, and on the first um, uh, picture, I, I, when you open this album, it's got, me, my mother wrote, Jeff's Christening Day. Right. You know, in her neatest handwriting. And there, if you can imagine what I look like in a white frilly frock, you'll get some idea of my baptism. Well, well, it's not really baptism, my christening day. Yeah. You were very pretty, I'm sure, Jeff. Well, my mother thought so. <laughs> <laughs> now, many of our viewers today would be brought up in a tradition like that. What is the process that needs to go on before we're baptised? In Paul's writings, it's quite clear that 
be on the way towards baptism, there's instruction that takes place because if you're entering into a new relationship with a group of people, and this is something we should mention along the way, we, the, the Bible talks about being baptized into Christ. So when we are baptized, we're actually joining a larger group of people who have joined into Christ. So you are joining a community. There's a community of faith that you're joining when you're, when you're being baptized. And so as you, are, as you are joining the community, you need to understand what the community means. You need to hear about Jesus. And so there's a text there um, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, so this is the kind of language Paul's used quite a lot. Uh, in becoming Christians, there are things we want to learn about, uh, how, how about Jesus, how to live as a Christian, and so that's, that's an essential part of baptism. Like you mentioned about weddings, uh, the wedding is the expression of something that's already taken place. So in baptism, we, we are committing ourselves to Christ. We have committed ourselves to Christ, and we, we're joining a community, and we're understanding what, what we're doing as we make that step. Yeah. I'm reminded too, just um, off the top of my head, thinking of Matthew 28, um, in verse 20, you know, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, yep. I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. Indeed. Now this then, Johnny, would preclude a baby being baptised because you can't teach a baby. I mean, the Bible says that before we're to be baptised, we should repent, we should believe. Mm -hmm. Now, they're not verbs mm -hmm. or activities that a baby can do. And, and, and many of us and our viewers, like the tradition that I was brought up, have been told that this is baptism, but is that baptism? Well, as we've just as we've just discussed around the table today, we've got the tradition of baptism from Jesus Himself, yes. and as a follower of Christ, um, I want to follow His example. And when He was baptized, His Father said that He was well pleased with Him, mm -hmm. and I want to do something that I'll please my heavenly Father as well. And so, that way of being baptized is actually by immersion being submerged, and the apostles also followed on with that teaching as well. So, Danielle, so far we have discussed that baptism is not for infants, even though many of us have been brought up in that tradition, because the Bible knows nothing. There's no text that I know of, unless you folk know of verses in the Bible. I don't know of any verse in the Bible that teaches that babies ought to be baptised. Do you? No. No. There's certainly a lot of verses that tell us that God loves little children. Yes, um, he does love little children. Um, but they're not to... Unfortunately, what's happened over the years is that the Bible says instruction ought to um, take place before we're baptised. And, you know, when Jesus was a little baby, what happened to him when, when, when his parents brought him to the, to the temple? He, he was dedicated, wasn't he? Mm. Mm. And, right. and I think that's the that that's the uh, that's what we ought to follow when it comes to um, to our children today, our little babies. We ought to dedicate them to God, and then when they're old enough to make their own decision, as the Bible says, then they can be baptized. Absolutely, and part of that dedication process, you know, with young kids, is bringing them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord, you know, teaching them not just about the Bible, but about what it means to be committed to God and to have a day, daily walk with him so that when the time comes that they are ready to make that decision, they know what they're committing to. I mean, we see in marriages, you know, people just taken off to Vegas when they're drunk or whatever and, you know, there's no commitment, there's no getting to know each other, there's no, I guess, teaching about, um, about the relationship. Um, why... Why do we want to sort of put that pressure on our kids too, you know, to force some kind of belief on them yes. rather than just loving them through? Rob, is it true that every person has to be baptised, that you can't get to heaven unless you're baptised? Some people believe that. Yes. So please help us. And I was, I was thinking about why people had moved away from adult baptism to ch child yes. baptism. Yes. And I think it's partly because they don't understand that question. There's a text here in Luke chapter 23, and I'm reading from verse 42. 
Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. We have three people dying on a cross. We have Jesus and two thieves. One thief says, Lord, remember me. And Jesus says, you're going to be with me in kingdom. You are going to be saved. So the important thing to notice is that you don't have to be baptized to be saved. Now, I've got a hard question for you, Johnny. If you don't have to be baptized to be saved, why should we be baptized? But that's an exception. It is, yeah, that's true. I think that while we have the opportunity, we should do it. Yeah. Uh, Christ has commanded it. And when he was baptized, I mean, he went to John to be baptized and John tried to prevent him from being baptized. He says, I need to be baptized by you. And, and what, you're coming to me to be baptized? And this is what Jesus said. He said, permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So it's a commandment, uh, it's a requirement. Whilst we have the opportunity, we should do it. And the other reason that we should do it, you're entering into the body of Christ. It's the symbol of entering into his, in, into the, the, his body, the church. And I just want to say that I've had two great days in my life. And the first one was when I was baptised. Mm -hmm. What an awesome privilege and experience to be accompanied by a whole bunch of other believers and to enter into the church and to, for other people to encourage me in my spiritual growth. The second most important day in my life was being married. And I'm only newly married, but it's been one of the best things I've did. It was a public declaration to my friends and my family that I am going to be loyal and faithful to my wife, whom I love, and we are going to be in a continued, committed and um, devoted relationship to each other. And that's just how baptism is all about. Exactly. I mean, I'm just so excited when I think about this. That, you know, you and I, we all, everybody, when we're baptised, we are part of God, Christ's body. Imagine that. I mean, when you think about that, I mean, he's the head, the Bible says, we are the body. That's, I think that's just wonderful and awesome. And uh, Actually, you know, Jeff, it's the, a privilege. The image of the body is interesting. Yes. The, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, you have eyes, you have arms, you have hands. Everybody is different. And so what we have coming into the community of believers is a lot of people with their own special gifts to give to the body of Christ. And so I would say anybody that's thinking of being coming a Christian, you are bringing something special with you and God wants you to bring your gift to his service. And the other thing about that, sorry, Johnny, is that, um, you know, every single person has an important place. Mm. You know, it's a place where um, you come into a family. You literally yeah. come in and are adopted into the body of Christ. And I know that when you're making a decision for baptism, you do have to make the decision when you are ready. And that's a valid thing, you know. People say, I'm just not ready just yet. But also we have to realise that time will not go on forever. So... It's good to make a decision, you know. Um, the Bible's always saying, today is the time for decision. Tomorrow we don't have no guarantee of. I mean, I I'm just thinking about your uh, wife, uh, Johnny. I mean, what would she think if you uh, said, I loved you, I love you, I love you, but you were never willing to commit to take her as, as your special girl? <laughs> yeah, I know what would have I mean, there. she would... Uh, <laughs> I think that I might know too. Yeah. And, and, and that's the way many of us are, isn't it, with Christ? We want to put it off and we say we love the Lord, but we're, we're putting it off. And God doesn't want us to do that. It's, it's, it's important. You know, in this great epic story, God wants us to be committed to him because he loves us. That's the reason why it's like a lover. Those two people want to be together and so Christ wants to be with us. us. And that's what commitment means. And it's symbolised by this beautiful ceremony of baptism. And unfortunately, down through the years, the devil has distorted and confused what the symbol is all about. That's why Romans 6 says that we are buried with, we die with Christ. We, we are buried with him. And then we are raised to walk in a brand new life. And that's the excitement of being a Christian. It's not just a theoretical uh, uh, words. This thing really works because the same power 
that Christ has is available to us. That's why Paul could say that we can do everything that God wants us to do through Christ, not in our own strength. And baptism by immersion is the Bible method. In fact, I remember reading St. Peter on the, if we go back to the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts in verse 36, he says, Therefore, that all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And you can imagine how the, the Jews reacted to that. Then he said, Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I would like to appeal to every one of our viewers today that we commit our life to Jesus, and that total commitment is sealed when we are baptized, the same as when we are married. Our commitment to our spouse is symbolized by that public demonstration of being married. And Jesus invites us today to be part of his body. And I want to appeal to every person to accept Jesus and to, to be baptized. And, and the f very next opportunity that you have, I would like to encourage you to be baptized. Let's just pray together. Our Father in heaven, I just want to thank you again today for the still small voice of your Holy Spirit. We have just read St. Peter when he said that if we are baptized and receive forgiveness of sin, then the Holy Spirit will be poured out into our life. And we long to be under the influence of your Spirit moment by moment, day by day. Bless every viewer, bless each of us. We long to see Jesus come and we want to be ready. And so help us, Lord, to make that decision today, I pray for Jesus' sake. Amen.